morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. I hope all of you had a um, good and a refreshing weekend uh, and back to another week of learning and uh, doing what God has ordained for us to do. Uh, before we continue looking at the developmental needs of uh, teenagers, ages 13 to uh, 18 years, uh, let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask Abinas to lead us in prayer, please? Uh, yes, ma'am, sir. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, Father, we thank you for this time, Lord, for this morning and for this new day, Lord. Father God, we really want to thank you for all the students that we will make it able to come in the session, Father God, as we are going through this session, Lord Jesus, lead us and guide us and help us to understand, Lord, understand, Lord, that how children are, how kids are, and Father God, so that we can minister them, Lord, just according to their age, according to their emotions, according to their understanding, Father God. We submit, ma'am, to your mighty hand, God, and all the students to your mighty hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abinas. Okay, so um, on Wednesday, we began looking at the developmental needs of uh, teens, ages 13 to 18 years. And um, uh, we looked at what to expect. Basically, uh, teens are, uh, you know, they're growing up. They are uh, uh, beginning to challenge the, uh, the rules of authority figures, whether it's in their homes with their parents, uh, teachers, or, um, you know, uh, whoever they are relating to, uh, because they just want to, you know, uh, go by doing things, uh, you know, based on their own values, what defines themselves, what they feel comfortable with what they think is right, what uh, they feel uh, is, you know, uh, they need to do uh, rather than what people's opinions is, because now they're beginning, they have shaped uh, their own uh, moral values, their thinking, their opinions, and uh, they just want to implement what they feel, they think, what they value, and what their opinions are. You know, they, they listen to other people's opinions, um, some of them, but some of them can argue on it. <coughs> Sorry. But, um, you know, even if you tell them to do something, they will uh, kind of do a part of what you have said, but then they will go back to doing, you know, exactly what they feel and they think is right and uh, what, uh, uh, you know, uh, makes them feel comfortable, uh, what defines uh, their comfort level and their feelings and thinking and opinions rather than uh, what other people uh, think. Because they're basically uh, beginning to live independent. Um, they want their own independence. They want their own freedom. And uh, they'll do anything to fight against anyone or anything that comes against their own independence and their own um, uh, freedom. Uh, we stopped at that um, uh, last class. Um, we said that, you know, uh, we looked at this point as well, that they begin to develop um, uh, their capacity to think in much broader terms. Uh, that's why in school, you know, uh, during this uh, this uh, season of their life, they're learning uh, theorems, they're learning proofs, they're, uh, you know, they're trying to, um, uh, uh, you know, do practicals on their own, you know, whether it's chemistry, physics, bio, you know, uh, practicals so that on their own, they're trying to invent things, they learn, uh, uh, they're learning things on their own, they, they kind of connect um, the dots, you know, of what they're learning into broader terms. Uh, uh, they're trying to understand things uh, in uh, in a broader term. They're trying to put things, uh, connect things, so that they can understand it in the holistic way, in the way that it exactly, um, you know, appears or seems or uh, uh, is uh, relevant uh, to them. Uh, they also find, uh, you know, they uh, find it easy to um, understand uh, abstract ideas. That's why there's a lot of theorems and proofs, uh, proving things. Uh, which um, uh, they are learning and they're uh, trying to do on their own. Uh, it's all because, you know, they, uh, the, the way of their, uh, 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 you know, the, the education in school, uh, the way they are learning, the way they're taught in school. Now it's they're not spoon fed anymore. You know, they have to uh, write their own answers. They have to 
proof uh, their own uh, the proof the sums or you know the math sums that they do the theorems uh, the proofs that they have to do in uh, in mathematics uh, and also you know uh, that is kind of broadening their understanding of uh, things and way to connect things uh, and hence you know when we are teaching them we need to get them to also try to connect the dots uh, when it comes to like you know uh, uh, old testament prophecies how it's fulfilled in the new testament uh, to seeing how god's ways are um, uh, talking about the history and the culture of the old testament uh, how to uh, understand scripture in the context of its uh, uh, in the literary understanding in the cultural setting historical setting uh, because they're able to connect things they're able to understand it in in much broader uh, uh, terms uh, they can also, uh, you know, um, see many things uh, in the world from a new perspective. Uh, uh, you know, they're able to understand, they're able to reason, they're able to see things through very clearly. So, uh, you know, they're able to understand that, uh, uh, you know, their parents are, um, you know, uh, are not perfect. They have their own problems and failings. And uh, this is one reason why they want to make their own uh, statements that, uh, you know, go by what they feel and think is right, uh, because they think their parents are also, uh, you know, uh, can be wrong at times. They also have their uh, weaknesses. They also have their problems and their own feelings. Uh, and hence, you know, uh, it's okay for me to experiment and do things on my own. Um, and also it, when it comes to uh, church as an institution, you know, schools uh, and the government that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that is there in their own uh, city or in their country, they're able to see the failures um, in all of these institutions and structures. And, um, you know, and they also come to know that they're not dependable. Uh, and hence they're looking for, even as they're looking for independence and freedom, uh, they're looking for people, uh, you know, who can be right, who can teach them the right things, do the right things at the same time and lead them in the right way. So it's a good time to get them connected with God because God is perfect. Uh, you know, um, he's, uh, he's unchanging. Uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, uh, his ways are all right and perfect. Uh, so even as they live in this world, which is so much of imperfections, they're seeing faults, they're seeing uh, people and government structures and institutions are not dependable, even to the extent that their own, uh, uh, you know, parents um, have their own weaknesses, you know, we can connect them to this one uh, person who is God and uh, who they can connect to, you know, who is unchanging, who is, uh, 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 you know, who is, uh, uh, um, who is perfect, who is good, and also to his word that is infallible, that has no mistakes, no errors, uh, and no, um, uh, you know, we can't find any fault in, in God's word because it is his word. Uh, so these two constants, uh, when we, uh, you know, kind of uh, introduce them to it and kind of get them to be dependent on it, uh, it will help them uh, in the longer, uh, uh, you know, season of life that they're going to venture into. And also in the season where they're learning that, okay, in spite of things around them not being very perfect and dependable, uh, you know, they can depend on God and they can depend on His Word. So th uh, these two things that you can, uh, you know, highlight uh, and teach them, and uh, get them to see uh, clearly. They also are able to see themselves as separate uh, individuals. Um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, so, you know, th they know they have their own uniqueness, they have their own uh, uh, ways of thinking, ways of doing things. And that is why if you kind of correct them, if you kind of, uh, you know, tell them what to do, they can be very sarcastic, they can be uh, very criticizing, uh, they can, uh, if you point out their faults, they can even point out your faults and tell you what you have not done, how you are not uh, correct. Uh, so it's uh, it's very important as um, uh, people who are ministering to this age group that we are watching our own lives uh, very, very closely, our actions, 
uh, how we uh, behave, how we relate to them, uh, what we are saying, how we are dressing, what we are doing, uh, all in line with um, you know, uh, with scripture and also it's not contradicting what we are teaching, what we are standing for, our faith and uh, what we are doing, you know. So they can also see through that, you know, as a teacher who's teaching God's word, you live by it, you you, you go by God's word and uh, they can depend on you, they can trust on you and they will be able to, you know, they'll be willing to come and uh, share things with you. It's also very emotionally um a turbulent phase, um, you know, where they can get very, very moody because of their, um, uh, they'll have a lot of mood swings because of uh, the hormonal changes. So if they're not very interactive in class, they're not listening, they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, they don't seem very um, excited about what you're teaching or they're not uh, uh, participating in what you have, you want them to participate in then you know basically need to know that uh, you know it's because of the hormonal changes the mood swings uh, maybe you need to help them out with that uh, get them to see that it's okay to feel the way they are uh, but not just get confined to their feelings um, but to get out of it and to just uh, participate uh, to um, uh, to get involved in things that are happening around them so uh, we can learn to uh, help them uh, segregate their own um, feelings, keep them uh, aside uh, at the same time, you know, how they can, um, uh, you know, given their best, they can, um, uh, they can participate in things, they can get involved in things and helping them to know that it's just part of their uh, whole uh, physical uh, changes that are happening and emotional changes, but uh, it should not get the better of them. That's going to help them, you know, also uh, understand that, uh, you know, it's okay to feel sometimes down, but you know, they need to study, they need, they can come to church, um, uh, they can even worship God, even if they're, they're, they're not feeling uh, right emotionally, they're uh, feeling very moody, they're feeling very down, it's okay to worship God, it's okay to read God's word, because sometimes we feel that, you know, uh, when we are feeling down, when feeling depressed, we don't feel like worshiping, we don't feel like uh, reading God's word, we don't have uh, anything to do with God's word uh, or with God himself uh, or praying uh, but it's uh, you know it's a good time to teach them that um, you know we can uh, come to this place where we can leave our feelings aside uh, what we are going through just uh, you know uh, irrespective of how we're feeling just worship God uh, pray read the word because that is going to uh, uh, you know uh, change the way we are feeling and thinking just lift us up uh, lift us out of that depression those that moody uh, moodiness um, uh, suicidal feelings uh, feelings of uh, uh, not being uh, loved uh, or cared for uh, feeling that they are not important they're not valued uh, all of these things can be subtly put in even by uh, the devil so we can teach them um, you know how to um, lay aside their feelings or handle their feelings uh, and also look at God's word uh, worship um, come to church uh, and when they do you know uh, the change that happens within them uh, uh, the way they their uh, their feelings are just uh, uh, moodiness their uh, depression is just lifted up and uh, they can just feel peace they can feel a sense of release they can feel a sense of uh, uh, you know, hope and encouragement. Uh, so they will learn that uh, church is a place where they can come with all their baggages and they can go back, you know, uh, just feeling refreshed, strengthened in the Lord, uh, uh, knowing that uh, they can feel encouraged, they can get answers to their problems. And also prayer and uh, reading God's word or worshiping can just lift up their uh, spirit man and uh, can get them going in um, a life. So it's a good age to, you know, get them to learn all of these things which can help them uh, in the future. But if you just let them be like they are, you know, uh, then they're going to give in to their feelings, uh, the, their, uh, the feeling, their feelings is going to get the better of them. And it's going to kind of be a hindrance for them even in the future. But when we're teaching them uh, how God's word and, um, praying and worshiping and just fellowship uh, fellowshipping with pe fellow believers in church is going to bring about a transformation and uplifting of their emotions uh, and the spirit man 
uh, it will have a lasting impact and also will help them to depend on God and connect in times of uh, brokenness and pain and uh, depression. Okay. Uh, also, the uh, uh, you know their friend groups um, uh, you know is uh, uh, becomes very very important to them. What their friends say, uh, what is important for their friends, the way they dress, uh, the the friends culture in that group that they have, so they feel very very um, uh, you know it's very important for them to feel part of a of a group where uh, they feel identified, they feel valued, uh, they feel important. Uh, so, you know, uh, you can see them in gangs, in groups, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, their relationship with their peers is very Im uh, important for them. They share more uh, with their friends uh, because they feel their friends understand them, uh, you know, will not contradict them. For example, you know, if uh, uh, if a child comes to school or teenager uh, comes to school or comes to children's church and very sad, so the friend says, hey, what happened? You're looking very sad and down. Hey, my, you know, parents uh, uh, shouted at me this morning. Why did they shout at you? Because um, I just wanted to stay back home. I didn't want to come to church. You know, I wanted to uh, finish my project or uh, I have a test tomorrow and, you know, I wanted to study and they said, no, church is important. You should have finished this on Saturday. You should plan things ahead. They gave me a big lecture and I'm, I'm so irritated, you know, and their friend will not say, hey, your, what your parents said is right. You know, you should plan ahead. You should think God is important. The friend will identify with them, say, yeah, you know, I don't know why these parents don't seem to understand what we are going through. You know, um, uh, we have so much of project work. They didn't have project work when they were in school. They don't understand, um, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so, you know, the, the friends are kind of uh, uh, going alongside with them and identifying with them. Uh, they're not helping them uh, see through in a positive way. But if if you ask them as a teacher, hey, what happened? Why are you looking so down? And they'll say this and that and, uh, you know, uh, I repeat to you what I just said. Then you will say, um, I think, you know, uh, uh, it, it would have been nice if you, what did you do on Saturday? You know, I went out here, they shopping. You should have done it, you know, so that you can come to church. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have something exciting in Children's Church today. I have an exciting class for you. And it's like, oh, no, please. Why did I ever say say this to this lady? I mean, I, I, she's going to preach again to me. I should have realized, you know. So uh, uh, basically, their peer groups are someone who identify with what they're doing, go alongside with them, encourage them in their own uh, kind of uh, uh, situations because they're going through the same thing. They are not able to understand things uh, in a broader sense. Um, so, uh, you know, the peer groups are very important for them, but we need to help them also, um, you know, build uh, good relationships outside their peer groups with, uh, you know, you as a mentor or with some older adult who they can connect with, who they can mentor with, see them, help them see things in a more clearer way, in a, in a, in a way that is right, in the way that will help them think right and do things in a right uh, way. Uh, but in spite of, you know, uh, these teenagers having a lot of uh, 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 issues with their parents, disagreements, arguments, uh, and like I said, you know, Tom and Jerry, that uh, show that's happening at home day in and day out, uh, but their family is still uh, their strongest uh, uh, support system. Uh, uh, so for an adolescent, for a teenager, their family is still a very strong uh, support system. They still depend on their family, still, still fall back on their uh, family. So good uh, age to help them to uh, understand their relationship with parents, do a lot of teen sessions with them. Uh, this age group, it's important uh, to teach them even from the Bible, but also do teen sessions, um, which will help them see through the challenging areas that they're going through. Um, see the world view, see the uh, biblical view, what God is saying, help them to understand things with clarity, uh, which will help them uh, go through adolescence, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a smoother way, uh, in a very exciting way, in a very nice way, and also help them uh, in the uh, future. So, you know, talking about their relationship with family uh, is, is very, very uh, important. 
okay what you can do uh, how you can help them you know because uh, they want to do things on their own terms their own have their own rules uh, you know uh, do what they like what they feel uh, it's good for uh, this age group when you begin uh, a session with them you know in the beginning of the year when you're connecting with them just lay down some uh, rules don't say hey these are the rules uh, you know like the 10 commandments uh, don't dictate to them uh, you have the rules the back of your mind uh, you just tell them hey as a class what are the rules you think uh, uh, we should uh, you know go by uh, which will help us you know just have a good time um, uh, together to put things in perspective so everybody's uh, in sync everybody's on the same page everybody's on the same note uh, so you're not saying that hey we're going to have this rules so that you know we function properly but you know just saying that it helps us better uh, to do things to understand things to know where we are uh, and to guide us in the course so if you put things in a very uh, nicer way they you know they'll they'll be able to relate to you but you say hey let's put some rules down uh, they're not going to like it so you need to change your terminologies with them um, and uh, get them to discuss things you know slowly bring out your rules uh, they will have their own but uh, you discuss why you're saying what you're saying help them to see things uh, discuss with you and then lay those rules and uh, you know it's good uh, once in a while to uh, reiterate those rules if somebody breaks it uh, you know it's a good uh, time to get them after class to just speak to them don't do it in in the front in in front of everybody because that will be very uh, you know uh, demotivating for them uh, it'll kind of put their self image self value very low uh, because they like to be uh, recognized as individuals as adults treated like adults so good to speak to them after class and say hey remember this rule uh, you know you're not abiding by this rule is there anything that you uh, don't like about this rule and things like that discuss with them they will come around you know um, they're not so arrogant and stubborn that they will not follow it they will come around and they will know and they will just abide uh, by it don't make fun of uh, or criticize their uh, the way they dress their clothes or their personal belongings uh, if you have to talk to them about it you know do it in a fun way but do it in a very encouraging way uplifting way uh, which will help them to change and not get them uh, uh, you know to do things that are even worse keep talking to them uh, even if you don't if you don't get uh, uh, sentences or you know long uh, sentences or answers or you just get one word answers just keep talking to them sometimes they'll just say if you ask them something they'll say yeah i don't think so okay no uh, yes you know uh, i don't think it's right you know uh, i don't feel uh, that ways I don't think what you're saying uh, 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 applies to everyone. Uh, at the max, they will just keep giving you these, uh, you know, one word answers or just, uh, you know, one line answers, but probe into it, you know, get them to discuss, get them to uh, say what they are really thinking, because sometimes they think it's just cool to say, uh, yeah, okay, you know, uh, I don't think it's right. Uh, I don't feel this way. Uh, I don't think what you're saying is right. Uh, uh, because they think it's cool to say it and uh, they feel that you know okay they are in control of things uh, they are just, you know bringing forth their independence so you say okay great you know uh, uh, why do you think uh, what I'm saying is not right uh, if you ask them they would really not be able to think through they wouldn't haven't even thought of it uh, you know they would not be able to articulate they would just have said it because they just want to feel cool in front of their group uh, and their friends and that is their lingo that is their style uh, you know uh, but get them to see things uh, understand things speak it out um, discuss with them uh, which will just be able to help them uh, also understand God's word in a deeper sense under understand why God gives us rules why he lays down rules for us and um, uh, to see um, you know God's perspective in what he is saying so that when they understand God's perspective they're also learning to see other pers people's perspective uh, and learn from their perspective and not say only what I think what I say what I feel is uh, uh, right okay uh, be positive uh, be as positive and encouraging as possible uh, with them uh, but you know at the same time don't agree with everything they're saying which is wrong you know you need to be honest uh, speak the truth in love 
um, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, just say things. Sometimes you, some things have to be said straight uh, in a very honest way, in a very forthright way, uh, but also in a very positive and encouraging way. Notice uh, small achievements that they make, um, uh, or, you know, just... Uh, 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 appreciate them, encourage them, applaud them for it. It just builds their self-image and self-value. Uh, listen to their viewpoints and opinions. Get them to speak out their viewpoints and opinions. Sometimes they don't know why they're saying yes, no, yeah, okay, I don't feel this way and all that. But get them to think through, uh, you know, raise up various questions so that they're able to think through um, and share their opinions. Uh, give them an opportunity to reply uh, you know, or, and participate in um, the discussions that uh, you are having with them, okay? Yeah. Okay, so that is um, uh, very shortly and briefly about um, uh, teens, 13 to 18 year old. Uh, we just need a lot of prayer support for this age group, a lot of uh, wisdom of God, grace of God, uh, to speak to them, relate to them, and help them out because it's a very turbulent time of the of their uh, growing stages of their years of their life. And if they, you know, go through this uh, teenage phase uh, in a very um, positive way, in a very nice way, uplifting way. Uh, it will just make them very strong uh, uh, individuals, you know, impacting the kingdom of uh, God. So any questions um, regarding developmental needs of teens? Any questions anyone has? No questions? OK, uh, if there are no questions, we will uh, move to the uh, different types of learning, uh, the learning styles of uh, children. Uh, this can also apply to us as uh, adults. So I'll just uh, present the slide. Why it's not? Just give me a second, please. I'll just okay. OK, uh, we look at the learning styles of, uh, of P children, and this can also apply to us as, uh, as adults. You know, uh, children learn through uh, their five senses. Uh, and uh, our five senses are a primary ways, uh, you know, through which information goes to the brain. Uh, so it's good to use uh, all of these five senses or the most that you can use, uh, uh, you know, um, in your teaching, in it, or uh, to teaching activity, whatever, so that it can, uh, you know, apply to children in different uh, uh, stages of their learning and their learning uh, style. So, what are the uh, uh, five senses through which uh, we receive information, or through which we learn? What are the five senses? <clears throat> one is uh, seeing okay that is using the eyes mm -hmm. um another one is hearing using the ear then another one is uh, touching using the skin or the hands and feeling feeling yes then we have oh, i think uh, testing using the tongue and the, I think smelling using the nose. Yes, yes. Level. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Charles. Thank you, uh, Kennedy, as well. Uh, so our five senses is, uh, you know, through hearing, um, seeing, 
you know, by touch, uh, smell, and um, taste okay so when learning when the learning activity that uh, or our teaching uh, appeals to two or more senses then uh, you know more learning happens but if it happens just through one just like you know children are just hearing everything that you're saying there's no activity there's no seeing there's no touch there's no smell uh, you know uh, ha learning happens but not uh, you know in the fullest sense so you know when learning activity appeals to two or more senses more learning happens uh, and when you use multiple senses uh, you know, you reduce uh, boredom uh, in children. And when you reduce boredom, you know, uh, you actually reduce behavior problems. So you will not have children behaving, fighting, talking, disinterested, just falling off to sleep. Um, uh, because you're using uh, more than one sense to, uh, you know, relate to them, to teach them, and uh, they will be listening, they will uh, be excited, and learning will happen in the fullest and the holistic uh, uh, sense. Okay. Usually, you know, uh, uh, we we don't use uh, smell and taste activities. Um, uh, these are least used, um, uh, you know, ways of learning, but it can be most effective when you use these two as well, uh, because there are children who learn through smell and uh, uh, taste. Uh, so even when you, as you use all of these uh, five senses uh, in your teaching activity, um, you know, uh, the result will be a great amount of learning that um, uh, has happened in a child. A child will also be able to recall things and they will also be excited to go and uh, you know put into practice apply uh, what they have um, learned so we'll uh, go uh, look at each one in uh, a little bit more detail um, children learning uh, learn by hearing so learning happens by hear, uh, by hearing and these kind of learners are called as auditory uh, learners um, you know, uh, so how do children learn by hearing? Uh, when you're speaking, you're narrating the story, uh, not just using words, but also, you know, you could use uh, recorded music in the background. Uh, you can use sound effects, you know, like, for example, uh, uh, when Bartimaeus, uh, you know, he, he nobody was helping him to go to Jesus. And suddenly, you know, uh, he didn't know what to do. He, this was his only chance. And then he thought of an idea. And wherever he was standing, you know, he just, uh, he said, you know, you can just say he said, uh, uh, you know, Jesus, son of uh, the most high God, have mercy on me. But you can even use it with a lot of voice modulation and expression and you can scream and you can shout and say, Jesus, son of the living God, have mercy upon me. You know, so just, uh, you know, using a different kind of sound effects, uh, voice modulation. Uh, you can even use videos that, uh, you know, um, uh, that uh, can narrate uh, the way Bible stories, but ensure that it's it's lined with what the, the Bible says, because some of the videos are not from the right sources. Um, uh, singing, uh, you know, uh, 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 when you're teaching them a memory verse, you can put it in song. Uh, you can uh, use this as lyrics, put music to it, just sing. Um, some of the stories are also in song version, so you can sing it. Uh, you can also read out in a very dramatic way. You can narrate the whole story in a very dramatic way. Uh, now that will help children who uh, you know learn by hearing. Uh, using puppets, when you use puppets, there's you know voice modulation for different characters. Uh, quiz games, you know, uh, because you are speaking, the children are speaking. Different uh, children are giving their uh, answers, and also using uh, musical instruments. So all of these children uh, learn through song, through worship, through different kinds of uh, uh, ways that you can narrate the story, uh, sound effects. You can get them to also, you know, do sound effects even as you're narrating uh, the story. You can tell them when I'm saying this part of the story, you know, this is a sound effect you should have. Like I, I, I said, uh, you know, I think last week or week before last when you're narrating the uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, in the boat with his disciples and they were facing a storm. So you can talk about how there's thunder and lightning and, uh, you know, the wind was blowing. So, you know, you can get them to 
uh, you know, uh, do all of these sounds. Uh, it'll be exciting for them. It'll also keep them attentive and, um, you know, because they are participating and uh, children who are auditory learners will learn very, very well. Children also learn by um, seeing and they're called uh, visual learners, okay? Um, uh, so you can use uh, pictures, you can use puppets, you can use flannel uh, figures, you know, flannel graphs. You have this flannel board with just very soft uh, baby-like uh, cloth material that is there. And then you can just get, uh, you stick and you're saying uh, the story, you know, uh, you put the background, you put the uh, mountains of the tree and, you know, Jesus and Zach is on top of the tree and all of those pictures are available. So as soon as you just take these uh, 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 pictures and stick, put it on that board, it'll just stick there. And, you know, children learn by uh, by looking at even these panel graphs. It's very exciting, uh, very creative, colorful. Uh, you can also use uh, videos. Uh, you know, you can uh, even mime things, you know, just um, uh, use, uh, instead of just using words, you can even do actions, gestures, you know, uh, which can be very, very exciting for them. Uh, you know, just uh, act out how, Bartimaeus was wa walking through the crowd and how he fell down and how people got angry and they pushed him aside and, you know, or uh, Zacchaeus, you know, quickly climbing up the tree and then, you know, he just hiding in, uh, in the branches and, um, you know, when suddenly Jesus came and stopped there and Zacchaeus, you know, his heart skipped a beat and he was wondering why Jesus stopped at that tree. He has seen him, somebody's pointed out. Uh, saying that, hey, look, Zacchaeus is there, and Jesus, I think you need to minister to him. And, you know, Zacchaeus is covering himself fully with all of those leaves and those branches. So just uh, sometimes, you know, uh, just miming, acting out those things. Uh, drama, get the children to enact after you have narrated the story. Smaller children would love uh, doing this, uh, not the older children. Um, but, you know, you can uh, you can give uh, various, for older children, especially teenagers, you can give them various uh, scenarios or life situations, or you can just come up with the situations and get them to enact, two groups enacting in different ways. They're able to see each other's perspective, uh, the difference in perspectives that can arise from one situation, uh, which they will enjoy doing uh, real life um, you know, and acting of situations rather than just acting out Bible stories. You can even use object lessons, uh, uh, you know, use different objects like Jesus used. He said, look at the mountains, the lilies of the field, uh, the birds of the air, you know, the sparrow that was there. Um, and I'm sure after Jesus went, you know, um, all of what he taught uh, came back to people's memory when they saw the farmer sowing the seed, when they uh, saw the mountain, you know, it might have activated their faith, uh, you know, or when they saw the fish, you know, the miracle that he did, the sparrows, the lily of the field, uh, the grass uh, would have reiterated all of those stories. So even Jesus, uh, he, uh, even as he used parables, but he used a lot of objects to communicate different truths, uh, which would help people, uh, you know, remember what he, um, uh, you know, taught them because they didn't have the manuscripts like we have the Bible today to just read through. Uh, they just went by what they had heard, they had listened, and what was registered in their um, mind. Okay, you can also do uh, demonstrations. For example, if you're teaching them about the parable of the sewer, you can have a tray with mud, and that you can have good soil, you can have... Um, uh, you know, you can have uh, a, a, a small place where you will put rocks, you can have thorns there. And the children who like uh, to learn by touch, they can touch the thorn, they can touch the mud, the soil, the seed. Um, you know, they can touch the rocks because they're learning to that. Uh, and children who learn by seeing, uh, you know, can just look at it and then, you know, they're visualizing how the farmer is throwing the seed. You throw the seed and some is falling on the tray and good soil, some is on the rock. And, you know, so it's very exciting for uh, children. Also demonstration, uh, we did a very powerful uh, way of demonstrating, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 during uh, the Lent period, um, uh, nearing to uh, Good Friday, uh, you know, what Jesus went through. So we had these different stations of the cross. 
Um, and uh, uh, one station we had was in, in a in a big hall. Uh, we had one place where uh, you know the uh, we uh, uh, we kind of uh, uh, displayed what would have happened in the Last Supper. You know, we had a table and we had uh, small plates and uh, a jar. You know for the wine and uh, just uh, you know uh, bedding down and pillows so that children can come and sit down there and then talk about the last supper what jesus did uh, so that was the first station the next station was the paratorium or the creditorium uh, where jesus was taken and he was beaten and uh, a crown of thorns was placed on his head so we have a you know, we get a, a wooden stick and we just keep it there it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a very um, a, a place where uh, that station was empty just had the stick you know and uh, we made a a, a, a a crown of thorns and children actually put their hands on the thorn um, and we just talked about what Jesus went through there um, all the events that happened and they were able to feel you know uh, the pain what Jesus would have gone through what he went through and also just you know bring back to memory the whole uh, uh, events uh, uh, around Jesus's crucifixion and then we had uh, the, another station where we had the Garden of Gethsemane so we put a lot of plants over there and uh, you know how Jesus um, uh, you know flower pots and plants and everything and uh, you know Jesus uh, with his disciples just uh, you know praying uh, what Jesus did there in the Garden of Gethsemane and then we had the last station which was uh, you know the sufferings of the cross we had a cross and then we had a bucket with uh, red water we had put food color in that and uh, we had paper and pencil uh, or pen and uh, you know we talked about how Jesus was crucified what why he was crucified what happened during crucifixion uh, what Jesus did for us on the cross and then you know we talk about how he took our sins and so we get them to write their sins um, and you know uh, all their sins uh, we don't let anyone read it uh, you know and ask God for forgiveness and just you know when they ask for forgiveness take that uh, paper and put it in that bucket of red water symbolizing the blood of Jesus and uh, you know uh, we tell them now your sins are all washed away you now Jesus' blood cleanses your sins so it was a very powerful um, demonstration of everything that took place uh, during uh, you know um, uh, uh, the crucifixion and the events around that and it just uh, you know uh, uh, many children we see we saw them in the end we had the Lord's Supper after that and uh, we get got them into a time of uh, you know uh, rededicating or you know accepting Jesus the Lord and Savior we just see that uh, such a powerful impact in the lives of children many of them uh, you know were crying they gave their lives to Jesus and many of them resubmitted their lives to him so you know you can do various things that will demonstrate uh, you know uh, rather than just doing uh, you know the whole uh, birth narrative it's uh, good to do even this because this has a far reaching impact in the lives of um, uh, children also for uh, learners a story where you know uh, where you're teaching them through um, you know um, uh, you can create visuals while telling the story you can just draw it on the board or just paint a picture for them in their minds tell them no it was like this I remember when I was in uh, a kid um, you know uh, uh, during the VBS uh, we had uh, this uh, you know one person who was talking to us and he he got the story of uh, he was supposed to narrate to us this uh, the the story of how jesus uh, you know uh, fed the five thousand with the five loaves and two fishes and he was like oh i'm speaking to preteens and they all know the story so you know how am i uh, going to make it more relevant and he started off the story and we didn't know till he you know at least for about 15 20 minutes into the story that it was actually he was narrating to us uh, the whole story of um, the five loaves and two fishes of jesus feeding the five thousand he said how this young boy was you know he was uh, uh, almost your age a preteen and every time he had a summer holidays he would go to his uh, grandparents farm and he always uh, you know uh, so uh, he was uh, 
you know, wanting to go to the mountains, just near that mountain to see how things are there, to just have a feel of uh, going near that mountain. And every time his grandparents said, no, he was very young, too small, they were too old to walk him up uh, right up to that mountain. But his, uh, his grandmother said, you know, when you uh, come to, uh, you know, when you're 12, 13, uh, you're a teen, I will allow you to go there. So it was, he just celebrated his 13th birthday, he was waiting to go to his grandfather's, uh, grandmother's uh, farmhouse because you know he wanted to go on this uh, exciting adventure trip uh, past the fields to the mountain and then you know he goes and then um, uh, you know to cut the story short he says how uh, you know it was his day when he his grandmother said okay you can go and she packed a small uh, tiffin box with for him and uh, sent him off early and said don't spend too much of time you know come back by evening and then he went and he was looking at the birds and the you know the stream and just touching the cold water and was so excitingly he painted this whole picture i still remember it even after 20 25 you know 20 years of my life and then you know he talks about um how he goes uh, near this mountain and he's wondering where all this crowd of people have come how come so many people near this mountain it's it's like uh, you know there are no homes here people don't live here but why are so many people walking towards this mountain and it was you know quite alarming and shocking for him so he said okay let me also go and see and then he climbs up the mountain just follows the people and then he sees a man sitting on the rock and he's talking to these people and everybody is listening to him and even then we didn't register in our minds it was you know jesus and all that and then you know it was getting very late and uh, suddenly some men stood up and said anyone has any food here and then suddenly tommy remembers that he has his grandmother's pack food he was so excited he didn't have time to eat and then he gives this and you know then he says it was five loaves and two fishes and and my gosh it was such a way you know he painted that whole story for us so exciting a, such a creative way you know i thought he was just the best storyteller in the world and i still remember that it's and the way he painted it is we were like actually doing it following it like a movie we were watching it or we ourselves were in that field you know going towards that uh, mountain so that's how we can even paint that whole story made it very visual for uh, children okay children learn by uh, touch um, so you know um um, you know, you can see some children constantly fidgeting, uh, moving around. They have to be playing with their pencil, eraser, the table, moving the table or moving their legs or their body. And it can sometimes irritate us as teachers, but it's basically, you know, they're not able to sit still. They learn uh, uh, by uh, touch. So how can we... Uh, you know, uh, get children to learn uh, by touch. You know, we can put some things uh, that is related to the story in their hands or give them something in the story to hold on to and interact to. Uh, so, for example, if you're talking about, uh, you know, creation and Jesus separated the waters above, the waters below, you're talking about uh, how the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. Uh, you're talking about the flood or the baptism of Jesus. You can just have some water in a bucket or in a mug or, you know, in a bowl and just get these children who love to touch water. Not everyone would, you know, they would just, and, and they would be listening and it will it'll, it'll kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, stick in their uh, memory. Uh, if you're talking about, uh, you know, how Stephen was stoned, you know, how uh, the the rocks turned into bread, you know, when Jesus was uh, tempted, uh, how Satan said, you know, uh, I'll turn the stones into bread. Uh, also about uh, how uh, David went to kill Goliath. He took five smooth stones, so you can have stones. You can bring it to class. You can just put it in the hands of these children. Even as you're narrating the story, they're just fidgeting with it, but they're just learning. It just reiterates uh, 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 their learning and also helps them to listen and uh, understand. Also, when you're talking about um, you know creation or Moses, you know, put in the river banks. Uh, you can uh, put grass in their hand. Uh, when you're talking about the wise and the foolish builder, just put sand uh, in their hand, uh, you know, or you're talking about how Jesus is the bread of life, how he, uh, you know, uh, multiplied the five loaves of uh, bread, you know, you can just put bread in uh, the children's hand, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Uh, or when you're talking about Jesus, our good shepherd, or, you know, David, how he became from a shepherd to the king, you can put a stick in their hand. 
uh, or bandages. You can give them bandages when you're talking about the parable of the Good Samaritan, uh, thorns when you're talking about the parable of the sower or about uh, Jesus' crucifixion. Uh, the you know you can put seeds in their hand when you're talking about the parable of the sower and the seed uh, talking about jesus's triumphal entry you can put uh, give them palm branches when you're talking about the fruit of the spirit you can give them different fruits in their hand you can also you know uh, when you're talking about adam and eve the first sin you can also put uh, you know give them uh, fruit in their hand okay so uh, children who learn by um, sorry children who learn by uh, touching would uh, you know feel very very excited uh, when you do this okay uh, we'll continue in the next class about the different uh, other different learning styles anyone has any questions any questions okay no questions if there are no questions, then we'll end class. Thank you all for um, uh, joining class today. Uh, and we'll continue with this on Wednesday. Thank you, everyone.